Hi, good afternoon from Dubai. <laughs> so, um, just having a little bit of relaxed time before I go to my clinic. And I'll be posting a couple of questions uh, of ABC regarding these two topics, pedo and endo. So I wanted to clear some concepts uh, because when I studied, I'm a pediatric dentist myself, but when I studied the pediatric dentistry, a little bit of concepts were different regarding uh, traumatology and tra trauma, dental trauma is one of my favorite subjects. So uh, when I read um, what ADC wanted, because they follow this author Cameron, and we were following McDonald's, Dean and Avery. Um, certain concepts are different and they are revised over a period of last seven years. And ADC, ADC is following the new concept. So I'm sure like me, you must have also studied uh, what I'm about to say. Uh, but I'm going to give you the difference uh, of the newer concepts. So I want you to remember the newer concepts and uh, apply that to the questions that are going to be asked. The upcoming mock test, I think I'll be releasing around uh, 31st of July or 1st of August. And uh, it would help you to solve that mock test also and other questions as well. So let's start. So the first concept is about endo. Uh, so one of the questions that can be asked is a patient came to you with severe pain. And uh, what is the emergency management? They will mention this word emergency management. So the options given to you would be give a painkiller, refer to an endodontist, uh, do a pulpotomy, do a pulpectomy, do a RCT and obturation. Okay, these would be the options given to you. Now, uh, just giving a pain is not going to solve because it would be irreversible pulpitis. Um, medicine is not an option. That's not the emergency management. Referring to a specialist, uh, okay, but then as a dentist, uh, you are qualified to perform uh, RCT. So again, that is not the right option in this particular scenario. Uh, do a pulpotomy. Now, uh, pulpotomy, as we understand, is opening the pulp chamber, placing a formocrisol and um, calcium hydroxide or ZOE over it, as we have been taught. But pulpotomy also means that you're basically doing an RCO, that is root canal opening. Now that is the emergency management. Doing an RCT straight away is not a management because you don't have time to take, uh, because it's an emergency patient and you have like, uh, you know, uh, wedged him between two appointments just to take care of his pain. You don't have time to take the working length IOP or something, but you want to relieve the pressure of the pulp chamber by doing an RCO. But RCO is not the option that they have given. They have given to a pulpotomy. So like me, even first time when I had answered, I had answered pulpectomy or RCT, but that wasn't right. It was pulpotomy, the right answer. So I hope this one endo concept is cleared. Now let's come to dental traumatology. Uh, whenever we talk about fractures like the Ellis classification, Ellis and Davis's classification, it's related to permanent teeth. Always remember that. It's not the deciduous teeth classification. In Ellis's and Davies classification, which is from one to nine, that nine one is fracture, which includes all types of traumas in the deciduous teeth. Garcia Godoy is the classification for deciduous teeth, which is exactly like Ellis and Davies's, but it's in the primary dentition. So Ellis and Davies classification is for permanent teeth. Garcia Godoy classification is for the primary teeth. Remember this. Now, coming to Ellis's and Davies uh, classification, uh, type 1, just enamel fracture, you do enamelloplasty or you just do a composite management. So, I'm, I'm talking about what happened and uh, what's the management. So, uh, this, these kind of questions will be asked to you. Uh, they'll say a patient came to you with a class 2 fracture or a fracture in enamel dentine. What would you do? Just composite or GIC. Now, enamel dentin pulp. Okay, so the question would be like, example, an eight-year-old child came with fracture of enamel dentine and pinpoint exposure of the pulp. Okay, uh, now if it says it was less than an hour, two hour, one day, two day, three days, the answer would always be do a superficial pulpotomy, that is Civex pulpotomy. Okay. Your answer will never be direct pulp capping. So options given to you would be uh, direct pulp capping, Civex pulpotomy, uh, complete pulpotomy, pulpectomy, like these the options would be given to you. You should always choose even if the question says the patient has come to you after three days. 
so it should always be civex pulpotomy okay uh, because it's a fracture and uh, it's pinpoint now if it is not a pinpoint fracture and they say the exposure of the pulp is more than two millimeters then you would go with pulpotomy and i'm talking about an eight year old child meaning the root is not completed okay if the root is completed and there is a pinpoint exposure less than three days you would still go with civex pulpotomy that is superficial but if the question says the patient has come to you after two weeks then you would go for pulpectomy because the root is completed there is no point doing a pulpotomy understood so i hope these two concepts are clear you will never use a direct pulp capping as an option why because adc clearly mentions that direct pulp capping is to be done only when there is a mechanical exposure under rubber dam. Strictly under rubber dam, meaning you, you had a cavity, you were filling it up, accidentally you exposed the pulp and the tooth was under isolation in rubber dam. Then and then only you would do direct pulp capping. Otherwise, nothing, no scenario absolutely warrants a direct pulp capping, even if it's a pinpoint exposure in a class 3 fracture. I hope that is very, very clear. Now we come on to uh, evulsion. Now in evulsion, uh, if the root is not developed, meaning a seven year, eight year old, nine year old central incisor evulsed, uh, the patient comes to you within one hour, two hours a week, you would always just uh, transplant the tooth as in reimplant the tooth, not transplant, sorry. You would reimplant the tooth and you wait and watch. Uh, assuming the tooth was immersed in milk or HBSS solution, you will never do a RCT in such a tooth because there is blunderbuss canal, meaning there is an open apex. You will wait and watch, evaluate, and then only in future, if you think it's required, you would do. But immediate management would always be reimplant. Now, if the question says the apex is closed, and there was a tooth, a 12-year-old child or a 14-year-old child, the tooth is evals, they came to you, and the apex is closed then you would re-implant then do the RCT but you would do that immediately you wouldn't wait like for two weeks so the answer the option given to you would be you know just uh, re-implant do RCT after two weeks or do RCT then re-implant so the answer should always be you re-implant and do RCT immediately I know uh, when I had learned it said that um, when I was doing my post graduation that you re implant, you wait and watch over two weeks and then you do the RCT. No, that concept is no longer there. It's uh, you re implant immediately if the apex is completed and you do the RCT. Splint the tooth and then do the RCT. So that is the right option. Now, uh, another LSS classification if there is an intrusion of the tooth, of a permanent tooth. Deciduous intrusions, uh, you will take an IOPA and you will see. If the root of the tooth is buckly, you can choose to let it re erupt. If it's placed palatally, it means it would damage the tooth bud, so you will extract the tooth immediately. In a permanent dentition, if there is intrusion, a good intrusion, it means that the crib of the uh, alveolar bone is fractured and the tooth has just gone inside. 100% the blood is severed, the blood vessels, connections basically. The tooth would turn non-vital. So the here answer is you would uh, do RCT in such a tooth and position it. You would not leave it like that. I know even I had learned that if a permanent tooth is intruded, you just leave it like that. It's going to erupt. No, Cameron doesn't say like that. He says that you would position that tooth, you would splint it and you would do RCT immediately. So this is your answer of choice. I hope this is clear. This is a new concept. I understand. But this is how it is. So... Yeah, the, these are pretty much the basic things. Learn how many uh, weeks each splinting requires. It's a very easy thing. Uh, you can find that classification in any book. Just remember when there is a root fracture at the cervical end of the tooth, then only it's like four months. Otherwise, pretty much all of them are either two weeks or four weeks. And uh, easier way to remember which kind of splint, uh, see avulsion, intrusion, extrusion, subluxation, all this requires flexible splintings because the tooth root is not fractured. A hard splint will always come when the root is fractured. Then you don't want a flexible splint. So understand the concept why is what. Read uh, your McDonald's, Dean Avery, uh, you read other pedo books for it. Uh, but if you find Cameron, read that. 
uh, I have given that book to most of the enrolled candidates for the course that I'm doing. Uh, but you can also find it yourself in any other textbook. It's not like something great. Uh, but ADC follows Cameron, just remember that. And uh, I hope these concepts are cleared and hopefully you solve the questions in a right way, which are going to be based on this concept. Thank you.